Okay, um, sorry for the waiting. Um, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, my name is Kong Linxian, and uh, maybe you can hear I'm, I'm under the weather, so uh, uh, my voice may sound strange, so please bear with me. And today I'm going to uh, uh, share with you a new way to uh, manage Kubernetes cluster in Kubernetes cluster with OpenStack Magnum. Uh, for those of you who don't know us, uh, Catalyst Cloud is uh, an OpenStack-based public cloud, and we have uh, deployed three regions across New Zealand. Meanwhile, we also do private business. Um, we uh, we actually don't run, don't sell OpenStack as a product. Uh, actually, we allow the customer to run OpenStack, but we manage the uh, cloud infrastructure for them as if it, uh, it was one of our regions. Um, so we use the same software, the same deployment tools, the same group of people with same experience we have gained over the past five years running uh, public cloud based on OpenStack. Most importantly, uh, actually what pretty much what we do in, in Catalyst Cloud, we only use open source software uh, all the code we have developed is contributed to the upstream to benefit the organizations both in New Zealand or the, the worldwide. So we don't keep anything for us. Um, of course, we also acknowledge the fact that we have gained a lot from the open source community. Uh, Catalyst Cloud is also the first CNCF certified Kubernetes service provider in New Zealand. Uh, which is very important for our customers because, you know, uh, first it guarantees the uh, application portability and consistency uh, when interacting with any installation of Kubernetes. Secondly, uh, you know, to remain certified, all the vendors need to support the latest features, the latest versions of, uh, of Kubernetes yearly or more frequ frequently. Um, so the customer can be sure that the uh, they always have access to the latest feature that Kubernetes is, uh, the community is working very hard to, to deliver. So this is a, a f the feature that supported in our uh, Kubernetes as a service in Catalyst Cloud. Because we are based on OpenStack, so you can see there are a lot of features that are implemented with integration with other OpenStack services. For example, we are using Keystone as the unified authentication and authorization API uh, for both OpenStack and uh, the uh, the customer's cluster. And we're also using Octavia uh, for the implementation of uh, Kubernetes service of load balancer type, right? And we also developed the Octavia-based ingress controller for, uh, for Kubernetes. And we also um, leverage uh, Magnum itself to, to implement auto-healing and uh, auto-scaling. And of course, all the, all the work we, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> all the work we have done so far has been contributed back to the upstream. So back to Magnum, I believe most of you here today are from, are n uh, already know what Magnum is. Uh, so here I just gave a brief introduction in case you are missing some, some important details or the latest update. Uh, in the beginning, when Magnum was, was uh, designed as the container orchestration engine in OpenStack, which supports Kubernetes, Docker Swarm, and Apache Nessus. Um, however, as uh, Kubernetes becoming the de facto standard uh, in, in the container orchestration platform, mm, currently most of the contributions to the Magnum uh, today is r only related to the, to the Kubernetes. Uh, as part of OpenStack, uh, Magnum provides the RESTful API and can be running in multi-tenancy mode. And uh, the most importantly, Magnum touches almost each of OpenStack service. Um, Magnum is using heat for the, uh, the cloud infrastructure orchestration and uh, it's creating virtual machines in Nova and uh, it's uh, creating cinder volume as SD storage. Of course, it's using Newton for networking. Um, the Octavia is heavily used uh, in, in Magnum context. 
uh, first Octavia is used to create a load balancer running in front of the Kubernetes API. And also it could be uh, used to implement the load balancer type uh, service. And uh, last, it can also be uh, used to implement as a the ingress controller in uh, for Kubernetes with barbecue used uh, as the uh, SSL termination. As I mentioned previously, the cluster created in Magnum is CNCF certified. Uh, currently, it supports uh, the, the versions from v11 to v16. And uh, as far as I know, the v17 is, uh, is on the way. Um, Magnum also supports some advanced uh, features like auto scaling, auto healing, and rolling upgrade. Uh, the Magnum architecture is pretty much the same with uh, when it was created, but with some significant change. Uh, first, some, some API resources have been deprecated or removed. Um, so if you search Magnum uh, in the internet today, you can still see some concepts like Bay and Bay model, but actually they were uh, both replaced with cluster and um, cluster template. Additionally, uh, as the operating, the host operating system that is designed especially for the containerized workloads, uh, both Fedora Atomic and CoreOS are supported in Magnum. But as you know, um, the company CoreOS was acquired by Red Hat last year, right? So a new container operating system uh, was introduced named Fedora CoreOS, which combines the Atomic and uh, CoreOS, but will deprecate both in the near future. Um, lots of things are changed uh, in the Fedora CoreOS, but uh, which is not mm, backward compatible. So the upstream Magnum team is working very hard on the Fedora CoreOS support. So I believe in the, in the next release, um, the Fedora CoreOS will be officially supported in Magnum and uh, the, the Atomic and the CoreOS will be become the history. So in Magnum, in order to create a cluster, we need to create the cluster template first. In the template, in addition to some uh, necessary parameters like um, key pair, image, um, network, or the, the flavor, the user is able to define something else like uh, whether or not the cluster should be exposed uh, to the public. So uh, this is important because as we know this year, there were some critical security bugs happened in Kubernetes, right? but only affecting the public facing cluster. So it would be better for the customer to, to create the private cluster uh, to avoid the vulnerabilities. Um, the most uh, flexible thing in the template is uh, the label definition. But the label here is different thing with the label in, in Kubernetes. We can call that a Magnum label. Um, the Magnum label is a key value pair in the template. So currently, most of the advanced uh, features could be configured in, in the Magnum label, such as uh, the auto-scaling, auto-healing, or even the Kubernetes controller service configuration. We can also choose um, which add-on application can be deployed during, during the, the cluster installation. Uh, for example, the, the dashboard, the Helm, the Prometheus, the, the Grafana, and so on. Um, the last uh, important thing we should know of the template is the cluster rolling upgrade. The rolling upgrade feature in Magnum is initiated by providing a new cluster template so, for example, if you want to upgrade the, uh, uh, the Kubernetes version from v1.12 to v1.13, so we need to create a new cluster template. Well, we could keep everything except the kube tag in the, in the label. So the Magnum will trigger the uh, rolling upgrade process automatically. So here, please allow me to go to the, because I need to have a demo. So here I have in an environment um, which I need to create the, um, the, uh, 
cluster template first. So in this OpenStack environment, I, as the admin user, As admin user, I want to create a cluster template. So you can see from the, the definition, the, the command line interface, uh, we have defined uh, all the, uh, the parameters, also the labels here. And we are going to create the cluster uh, the version v1.12. And we don't want to enable the keystone uh, integration and uh, something else. So we can create the template. OK. so. Um, after we have the template, the next uh, step, we could create the cluster. Uh, although the in the template, uh, we uh, have defined the overall cluster definition, but the user can still have the ability to, um, to do some adjustments. Um, but uh, in this demo, for simplicity, we just uh, create uh, the, the cluster without any uh, configuration change. So Because just now we have created uh, the template named the seed cluster. So here I will create the cluster using the template. So the cluster name is the same, called seed cluster. And uh, we because for, for, for the testing purpose, we only create the cluster with one master and one worker. Because Magnum is using heat to do the cluster resource orchestration, so we can get the stack ID from heat. And uh, we get the stack ID from heat and keep watching the resource creation process. So we could know when the cluster creation is finished. OK, so during the waiting. So during the waiting, we can take a look at some uh, uh, the current existing problem in Magnum. Um, the, the first problem is, uh, is also the most uh, significant one for the end user, the creation time. Um, because um, just now we have created the, the cluster with one master and one worker, right? So in, in that environment, based on my testing, uh, even for a cluster with ma one master and one worker, it usually takes um, about 10 minutes. So not to mention if we, if we want to create a highly available cluster, which consists at least of three masters and one, wor one worker, right? So the, the reason are manifold. So first, uh, when creating the cluster, Magnum will create virtual machines in Nova and uh, load balancers in Octavia. Um, both will take a long time, right? So inside the, the virtual machine, the VM, Magnum will download the system container image from uh, one by one from Docker Hub, which also take a long time. At the same time, um, Magnum will create and manage and config all the cloud resources needed by the cluster. For example, the networking, the, the storage, and um, finally, Magnum will create the worker nodes and uh, install the Kubelet, config Kubelet, and join the worker node to the cluster. So you can see the, <coughs> the whole process will take a long time. It's quite time consuming. The, the next problem is the scripts, scripts management. So um, if you are familiar with the Magnum implementation, you must know there are a lot of shell scripts in the code repo. Um, so actually, I have a link, and I can open the link for you. But uh, for uh, for the demo, I, I don't want to go to go to the, the back to um, take a look, because there there are many scripts with each one uh, corresponding to each step during the cluster creation, so which is um, um, very hard to maintain and uh, is prone to error. Uh, one of the potential solutions I can think of is to use kubeadm. In, in the Kubernetes community, uh, which could uh, simplify the, the whole cluster creation process. 
because the Coop ADM is, uh, is stable and mature enough even for production usage. So uh, uh, by uh, using, and also the, I think the, the latest version of Coop ADM also supports to create the highly available cluster now. Um, as a public cloud provider like us, it's our responsibility to manage the, the customer's cluster. But for some uh, unprofessional customer, uh, we even prefer that the uh, system, the controller components and uh, system add-ons are invisible to them. Uh, because you know, in, in case some, some customers may uh, damage the cluster accidentally. But in the current Magnum implementation, the all the cloud resources created for the cluster is in in the customer's tenant. So the customer can make any configuration change as they wish, so which may bring bring troubles to the cloud provider, especially the public cloud provider like us. Also we care about the resource consumption of our of our customer. Um, which is important for their uh, business success. Um, but currently in Magnum, for, for example, for a highly available cluster, which consists of three masters, at least the three masters, one worker, the billing for the cloud resources created for the cluster is a big part of the customer's invoice, so which is a big concern for, for the potential customers and uh, could be avoided. So as a result, um, in order to, to solve some of the problem we talked about, we are introducing a, a, a new driver in Magnum to manage the Kubernetes in Kubernetes. So in this deployment model, there is a cluster called um, seed cluster, which should be created and managed by the cloud administrator and is transparent to the end users. Um, well, the seed cluster is nothing else but a normal Magnum cluster, but uh, it's up to the cloud admin to decide how many nodes should be created uh, in the beginning, but it still has the, avail the capability uh, of auto-healing, auto-scaling, and rolling upgrade, so all the functionalities in that Magnum provides. And all the... All the... Um, Tenant cluster are called customer cluster. So all the controller, uh, the the Kubernetes controller service in the uh, for the customer cluster are deployed as a simple standard vanilla pods in the seed cluster. So we could uh, use the Kubernetes feature for managing those controller components. For example, the high availability of the controller components can be easily achieved by using the internal auto-healing feature in Kubernetes. So if one of the, the master pods goes down, the controller manager in the seed cluster can detect it and the pod could be rescheduled and uh, redeployed um, quickly without any human interruption. Um, there are many approaches to deploy the, uh, the controller components. So we could use the operator pattern which follows the Kubernetes principle with integration of the resource management of the seed cluster. And uh, we can also use the, the Helm charts, which giving the cloud admin more control of the deployment and the configuration. And fundamentally, because all the applications running in the, in the Kubernetes cluster can be deployed using kubectl with YAML files, so, um, I think that's the best way to do some quick evaluation. And the worker nodes deploy deployment is different because worker nodes are actually the virtual machines in the customer's tenant. So we could still use the use Magnum way to manage the worker node deployment because Magnum is, is using heat for the resource orchestration. So um, we can reuse uh, the existing Magnum code. And it's also a good idea to use the, the operator because I, as we know, there are uh, some projects in the Kubernetes community can do the same thing. Uh, there is a project named uh, um, the Machine Controller Manager, right? It uh, can manage, can create and manage the, 
virtual machines in OpenStack in other clouds. And uh, if you are a fan of Ansible and uh, or Terraform, nothing could stop you from using those automation tools to do the, the workload deployment. Okay, for example, this is a, a seed cluster consists of one master and three workers. If a user wants to create the customer cluster, the Magnum will create all the controller components inside the seed cluster and also create the um, worker nodes in the customer tenant and connect the, the worker node to the API service of the controller component. And similarly, uh, for a second cluster, it looks like this. And uh, of course, for the third cluster, it looks the same. So the workflow uh, in this deployment model uh, looks like uh, this. The, the first step is the cluster administrator needs to create, uh, sorry, I need to put them all again. The, the cloud admin user needs to create the seed cluster uh, first. Uh, which we already uh, did just now. We can take a look. Um, so here the old cluster is just a live for OpenStack COE cluster. It's still creating progress. Uh, let's take a look at what resources is creating progress. it for a while. Okay. Uh, seems like it's the session is stuck. So if we check again, so the cluster creation is uh, successful. So here we have the uh, seed cluster. The next uh, step is for the admin user needs to do some configuration change in the, uh, in Magnum. So here I have a uh, script. So in this script, the first, uh, I, I want to retrieve the kube config file for the seed cluster and uh, copy the config file to the Magnum configuration directory. The next step is to restart the Magnum services and uh, to pick up the new configuration change. And the, the, the final step is to install cert manager in, in the seed cluster because cert manager here is an important component for for this deployment model, which uh, which could do some certificate management uh, in the seed cluster, so we will run this script. It will take a few seconds, so you can see the the third manager has been installed so we can have it we can check because in this session we are talking to the seed cluster so we can directly use kube control uh, command uh, so the key here is also allies for kube control okay so all the ports related to third manager has been uh, created and uh, up and running. 
And the next step, next step is, again, as the cloud administrator, we need to create the cluster template for the customer. So here we we are creating the second cluster template. The name is cluster, the customer cluster. And uh, there are two uh, significant difference uh, with the, the first one. The first difference is the server type. We are using container. Um, but in the, in the first one, the default value is VM. And also, we are going to create a public cluster template. So the end users can, can use this template to create their customer cluster. So with all those done, as, as the, the last step is as the customer, um, they can create the, the customer cluster based on the public cluster template. So we go to another session. So we are using demo user here. First, we can take a look at take a look at the the cluster template in the system. So we can see the custom cluster which was uh, we created just now as admin user. And next, we are going to create our customer cluster. So we are going to create a, a cluster named the custom cluster using this template. And um, so now the cluster is, is being created. So if we switch uh, back to, to the admin user, so we can, we can s because currently in this session, we are still talking to the seed cluster. So we can see there's a new namespace created in the seed cluster. So the namespace name is th the customer class ID here. And um, also, if we take a look at all the ports, in, in this namespace, we can see the controller components for the customer cluster is all up and running. So. Uh So I think the customer cluster is, sti is still being created. So we can wait for a while. So still during the waiting, um, let's take a look at some advantages for, for this deployment model. The first is unified API. Um, because um, as you see from the demo, either cloud admin or the end user are using the same API to create the, the cluster. So which means uh, from the Magnum's perspective, from the OpenStack user's perspective, nothing has changed, right? And the second is flexibility. Um, although in this demo, the, the cloud admin user uh, has, has to create the, the public uh, cluster template, but it's, uh, it's possible that end users uh, wants to create their own cluster template. And so um, they could have the privileged access on both master nodes and worker nodes. Um, but still um, without losing the capability of automated deployment and configuration. And um, in, in this uh, presentation, we have introduced the two concepts, the seed cluster, the customer cluster, but from the Magnum perspective, they are all Magnum cluster. So if we go back to the terminal and uh, as admin user, we can take a look, because the, the admin user can see all the clusters So in the admin user, you can see there are two clusters without any difference. But actually, in this deployment model, the, there, there is the one seed cluster and one customer cluster. And um, 
as I mentioned previously, the management and maintenance are very easy in this deployment model because all the controller components are actually pods running uh, in, the, in the Kubernetes cluster. So it's very easy. For example, if you queue the one of the component contro uh, c controller component and the, the seed cluster, the controller manager in the seed cluster will quickly uh, recreate a new one. And uh, also the fast creation time, because if we uh, take a look at the, um, the seed cluster creation time, we can see the time step uh, here. So you can see it took about 11 minutes to create a cluster with one master and one worker. And uh, for the customer cluster, I'm not sure if the cluster creation is finished. Oh, okay, so we can take a look at the creation time. So you can see from the timestamp here, it only took about four minutes. So it's, it's much faster. And um, and also th the last one is enhanced security. And uh, if we go back to the terminal again, as admin user, if we get all the nodes, oh, sorry. So we can see there is one master and one worker. And if we get all the system containers, so here cases is also a liars. So, okay, so we can see there are um, different uh, controller components and also there is a, a, a pod called uh, OpenStack Cloud Controller Manager because we are using the um, CPO as integration with other OpenStack services. But if, if we switch to the customer cluster, because first we need to get the kub, uh, kub config file. And now we are talking to the customer cluster and we can get the node. So here you can only see the worker node, right? So the master node is uh, invisible. And if we take a look at If we take a look at the controller components, we can only see the pods running on the ma on the worker node. So, which means it's the um, the it's the the cloud provider the responsibility to uh, to do the timely patch uh, or upgrade uh, to make sure the customer cluster is always uh, taken good care of. Oh, forgot. Excuse me. Okay, so I think most of you may be interested in no, uh, in the um, communication between the seed cluster and uh, the customer cluster. Um, when the user is creating the customer cluster, uh, actually uh, a load balancer of uh, corresponding to the Kubernetes service is created in in the cloud admin tenant, and uh, it's connected to to the customer's private private network to make sure the the worker node in the customer uh, cluster can talk to the control plane services. So actually there are different uh, load balancers created uh, corresponding to different customer cluster. And if we associate floating IP uh, with the, the VIP port in, in, uh, for the of the load balancer, the customer cluster can be exposed to the public. So um, there are still some work to do in the near future. For example, um, as you see in the demo, we are installing the cert manager um, manually, but it would be better in the Magnum that uh, they can be deployed automatically. The second is the SD um, performance tuning. 
because the SD deployment is not as easy and as straightforward as um, as the stateless application in, in Kubernetes because SD performance is critical to the cluster operation. So during our POC testing, we have learned there are a lot of options uh, to deploy the SD cluster. Uh, for example, we can use pods um, running in the in the seed cluster, or uh, or the the SD cluster could be deployed as a dedicated component running outside of on Kubernetes. So honestly, we don't have an answer yet. Uh, we will continue testing and uh, we will publish the the results. And also other uh, improvements like how to accelerate the workload installation, how to make it easier for the control plane uh, component management. And uh, before the end of this presentation, I want to uh, especially say thank you to Cloud Lab, which is um, a platform we could apply for cloud computing resources, either virtual machines or bare metals. So actually, the Cloud Lab is a test bed uh, which allows the researchers to, to do some experiments which cannot be running in the traditional cloud because they maybe they require some, um, has, su has some special requirements like um, the control and the visibility of the, uh, of the system like uh, uh, virtualization storage or the network layer and uh, uh, configuration. So um, the, uh, the application and um, usage is free to anyone with good reasons. So everyone is encouraged to have a try. Okay, this is what I want to share with you today. Um, because uh, we, uh, we delayed for some time in the beginning, so I'm not sure there's a time for the QA. But I, I will stay here for several minutes. If you have questions, feel free to come, come to me. Thank you. <laughs>